So here, we have a circuit that contains resistance and an inductor. How do these two combine? The resistor provides opposition to current flow, ohms. The inductor, we found out already, also provides opposition, reactance. So we're going to have to calculate what its reactance is. And then we will combine the two, not straight addition, little trick to that. And then we're going to figure out how much current and then what the voltage drops are on each component. Get the pattern for what we call a series RL circuit. R for resistance, L for inductance. We know how to turn that into uh, ohms. Let's do it. It's called reactance. And because it's an inductor, we put a sub L, inductive reactance. And that simply is two pi for life. Two pi, my frequency, I've given us a frequency of 60 hertz on this circuit. And the inductance value is 1. Do the math. 377 ohms. That's how much opposition that will provide. So this inductor, while running in a circuit at, at 60 hertz, will provide more opposition than that resistor. 377 ohms. So the question is, how do we combine those two ohmic values? And I'll tell you, we don't just plus them, okay? It has to do with the nature of what's going on in here. Voltage and current are in phase, meaning they cross zero, they peak, they trough at the same time. Voltage and current are in phase on a resistor. Voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degrees in a pure inductor, a theoretically pure inductor. We're ignoring the resistance within it, or you could view this as a coil. That's the resistance in the inductor, that's the reactance provided. But mostly in this class, we're gonna be dealing with pure inductors, and we're gonna be calculating them as such, and 90 degrees out of phase. So because of that nature, we can't just add these numbers. So what we have to do is we have to use Pythagoras. That's how you add two numbers that are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. Let's go like this. The resistance is 200 ohms. And the resistive values always go on the horizontal. That's what we call our reference line. I'll have a, one of the next couple of videos will be about why the reference. How does all that work? But for now, just understand that we're 90 degrees apart. So if that's going that direction, let's go our th draw our line for our 377 XL. Let's space that ohms out so we don't get mixed up here. Okay. So we got 377 ohms, 200 ohms, and that's how we're going to add these two together. So how do you combine two that are 90 degrees apart? Like I mentioned earlier, we use Pythagoras. That's a right angle. And it's our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you need a brush up on that, there's many videos on, uh, on YouTube. We'll give you a quick brush up on that. So our formula looks very much like Pythagoras. It, 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 pretty much, it, it is the same thing. Z, uh-oh, what's Z? Here we have R for resistance in ohms. We have XL. Inductive reactance, measured in ohms as well because it's opposition. Z is what we call the combined opposition of a resistor and a reactor. We call it Z. Stands for impedance. Impedance, the letter Z. And what that's going to equal is my resistor squared plus my inductive reactance squared, and then take the square root of it to find out 
what this side of the triangle is. Let's try it. Punch that in. And because it is also opposition, impedance is opposition to current flow, it's measured in ohms. 426 of them. And that's what we'll put here. 426.8 ohms. So that's our total circuit opposition. So if I'm pushing with 120 volts of pressure through a combined opposition of 426, can I figure out my current? Because if I have voltage and I have ohms, I can figure out either power or amps. So amps equals uh, E over R. But I don't have R here. I just took great pains to tell you this is R, this is XL, and that is impedance. But since I'm using the values here at the total circuit level, I can use total circuit values and substitute Z for R because this really means volts over ohms. And do I have volts? And do I have ohms? Yeah. And that's gonna yield the current right here if I use these values. So my E total, my substitute R with Z, and that's gonna yield my total current. Calculate that out, 0.28 amps. That's how much current is flowing. I total equals 0 0.28 amps. Now I wrote I total here, but what do we know about current and series circuits? Current's the same everywhere. Whatever amps leave here, got to go through the whole journey and back again. So I can immediately put the amps going through the resistor. Well, they're the same. And the amps going through the inductor are also the same. Why is that important? Because now I can figure out my voltage here. Right? I have 120 volts split between here and here. And if I have ohms and amps, I can figure out volts there. Let's try. Again, Ohm's law is, the way you've seen it before, just includes R. But here, we don't have R, we have XL, which is ohms, however. So I can still say ohms times amps equals volts. So for E, L, the voltage drop on the inductor. This is my ohms, that's my amps. Multiply them together. 105.6 volts. So my voltage drop here on the inductor is 105.6 volts. Let's try it again for the resistor. So we got ohms times amps again. Right, so the voltage on the resistor is going to equal 200 times 0 0.28. Punch that in, 56 volts. No problem. But some of you are looking at this going, Dave, done that up. 120 volts, 56 plus 105, that's you know, that's over, over 160. Got a problem. The currents are all equal and in phase. The voltages are out of phase by 90 degrees. And how do I add two things that are 90 degrees apart? Let's try it and see. My inductive voltage here my resistive voltage here, what will I add to? It's Pythagoras again, right? Where, where am I gonna put that? Right here. My 
total voltage, I'm trying to figure this, will equal the square root is squared plus this squared. Technically that's 0 0.6, 0 0.6 squared. And if you calculate those out, your number will come very close to 120 volts. Is that what we applied to the circuit? 120 volts. So that's basically how we add the values for resistors and inductors in series. It's use of right triangles. One last thing I'm gonna point out to you. This triangle and this triangle, are they proportional? They have different numbers. These numbers are all a lot larger than these numbers. 200, it's almost four times as much as that. 426, almost four times that. 377, almost four times that. Wait a minute, that's what proportional is. Or we can look at it this way, this number is a little more than double. Hypotenuse is a little more than double this. The hypotenuse here is a little more than double this. You could do the actual ratios and find out they're perfectly proportional. So that triangle would actually fit within this one. It would fit within there. The key part there is this angle. That's the angle theta we refer to. So these triangles between the ohms and the volts, and the next video will show power are going to be all proportional. Why is angle theta important? One quick moment, we'll dwell on it a little bit more, probably do some of that while we're in class. Why is it important? Because voltage and current in phase here, voltage and current 90 degrees out over here. When we get to total circuit, it's a combination between the two. It's not in phase, it's not 90 degrees out, it's somewhere in between. And guess where it is? It's right about here. So the voltage will lead the current by however many degrees that is, 60, 70 degrees, something like that. That's where it'll come into play. This is a combination of those two.